Welcome to the 2021 National Bar Association Heman Sweat Awards. And now, your mistress of ceremonies. Please welcome Winter Wheeler Esquire. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Heman M. Sweat Awards. While we couldn't have our usual white tablecloth luncheon, we would not let COVID-19 stop us from celebrating the legendary Heman Marion Sweat, as we also honor other outstanding leaders who've been breaking barriers as well. Heyman Sweat applied for admission to the University of Texas Law School in 1946, but he was denied admission on the basis of race. Mr. Sweat, with the help and assistance of the NAACP, brought legal action against the university. In the landmark case, Sweat v. Painter, the United States Supreme Court ruled that separate law school facilities could not provide a legal education equal to that available at the University of Texas Law School, one of the nation's ranking law schools. The Supreme Court ruling established an important precedent for the desegregation of graduate and professional schools. Challenging the separate but equal doctrine, the court affirmed Mr. Sweat's right to equal education opportunity, and in 1950, he entered the University of Texas School of Law. The Sweat decision helped pave the way for African Americans' admission to formerly segregated colleges and universities across the nation, and led to the overturn of segregation by law in all levels of public education in the landmark case of Brown versus the Board of Education just four years later. Today, we honor an impressive group of leaders who are so deserving of this praise. But before we get started with the program, we will have a special invocation followed by presidential greetings from our president, C.K. Hoffler. And then we will begin our celebration and recognition of the 2021 Heman Sweat Awardees. Let us pray. Almost gracious and wonderful Father, we come to you today saying thank you for the opportunity to be here together to honor your servants, to honor those who have committed to doing the good work you have called them to do, to honor those who continuously give of themselves in their profession and in their communities and in all that they do. I pray a special blessing upon each one here today who will be honored and I pray a special blessing for everyone who is here to support, to encourage, and to walk hand in hand with each one of them in the work that they do. It is in the name of your son that we offer this prayer. Amen. When we think about Jim Crow and the era of Jim Crow and how African-American lawyers played a critical role in dismantling those Jim Crow oppressive laws, we think of none other than Heman Marion Sweat. The National Bar Association has what we call the Heman Sweat Awards that are always given out during our mid-year conference. So it gives me a great deal of pleasure this year again to be able to award the Heman Sweat Awards to a group of individuals who have distinguished themselves in their community and in this country, not only as great lawyers or jurists, but also as community leaders. And this year, the Human Sweat Awards go to the Honorable Asha Jackson, who is the Chief Judge of DeKalb um, County Superior Court, Anita Wallace Thomas, who's a partner at the law firm of Nelson Mullins, Akua Kappa, who is the Chief of Staff at the National Bar Association, and who's been incredible. She's been my right-hand person for the past two years and has done so much work. Terry Wiley, who is an Assistant District Attorney in Almeida County. Jamie Boston, who has headed 
um, and chaired our veterans and military law section for many, many years and was given so much to the National Bar Association. And Daryl Jones, who is the chair of the board of the Transformative Justice Coalition, who was one of our main partners in our efforts at, suppress, at, 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 at fighting voter suppression along with Barbara Arnwine. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the ride. Ladies and gentlemen, our first stellar group of Heman M. Sweat Award recipients. The Honorable Asha F. Jackson is the Chief Judge of the Superior Court in DeKalb County, Georgia, and the 4th District Administrative Judge in the state of Georgia. In her current position, Judge Jackson presides over more than 1,000 complex civil, felony criminal, and domestic cases assigned to her division. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute the Honorable Asha F. Jackson. Greetings, most esteemed members of the National Bar Association, Madam President C.K. Hoffler, friends and guests. My name is Chief Judge Asha Jackson, and I'm so deeply honored and humbled to receive the 2021 Heeman Sweat Award. Heeman Sweat was a giant, and he worked tirelessly to ensure that students would have access to institutions of higher education. Heeman Sweat himself was denied entry to one of these institutions of higher education when he applied to law school in the state of Texas. He was denied entry not because he wasn't qualified, as he was well qualified, but he was denied entry because of the color of his skin. Heeman Sweat took that fight to the courtroom. And that is where I currently sit every day, where I must ensure that the rights of others are protected. I promise you that I will always endeavor to remember the work of those who have come before me, as I know that I stand on the shoulders of giants. And so today we honor Heeman Sweat. I thank you for honoring the work that I am doing, and I hope you have a wonderful day. A partner at Nelson Mullins Law Firm in Atlanta, Georgia, Anita Wallace Thomas practices in litigation involving general commercial litigation, franchise litigation, drug and medical device litigation, product liability, employment litigation, and toxic tort. She has served as lead counsel in more than 50 jury trials held in the Superior and State Courts of Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute Anita Wallace Thomas. Good afternoon. Um, thank you uh, so very much for giving me the honor of being one of the recipients of the Human Sweat Award. I am so humbled to be a recipient of an award that was named in the honor of someone who dedicated his entire career in the fight of civil injustice. I have over the last few months have been encouraged and inspired by the folks that do this type of work every single day. And by this, I mean the fight for racial, um, racial equality, social justice issues that impact our lives, my life, your life, the lives of my children. And I, have was recently given the honor, the great privilege of being able to serve as a chair of the State Bar of Georgia seeking equal justice in addressing racism and racial bias committee. And our president, uh, Sister Hoffler, did me the honor of serving as one of our featured speaker in our first of a series of courageous conversations that we're sponsoring throughout the uh, legal community in the state of Georgia. And what we've done um, is looked at, had courageous conversations with folks on difficult topics, topics that folks don't feel, always feel comfortable addressing, issues surrounding unconscious biases, racism, um, inclusivity. And as a result of those conversations, we have emerged more informed, more aware. And I see that bit by bit, we're making a difference. So I, to be honored 
for something, doing something that I feel so passionate about is very uh, special to me. And I will, uh, I re I've received a, you know, a few awards throughout the course of my career, but this is one that will always hold a very special place in, in my heart. So thank you for doing me that honor. I look forward to continuing the fight oh, with all of you. Have a great afternoon and again, many thanks. We all remember March, 2020 the month that changed our lives, the shutdowns, the unfortunate start of a major health crisis, life as I had certainly never imagined it. The 40th Gertrude E. Rush Awards and Mid-Year Conference was scheduled to take place in Atlanta that very month. A distinguished list of honorees had been identified and notified that they would be recipients of the Heman Sweat Awards. As you know, that celebration was put on hold but today, we are proud to recognize and honor the 2020 Heman Sweat Award recipients. Because of their legacy of dedication and commitment and overall recognition as civil rights leaders whose footprints we stand in today, the National Bar Association respectively and proudly presented these awards to the individuals who continue to work hard to uphold the legacy of these esteemed civil rights visionaries. Because of your achievements and steadfast commitments towards protecting our futures, we honor you. NBA Past President H.T. Smith Esquire Ernest L. Greer Esquire Barbara R. Arnwine Esquire Andrew Gillum and Stacy Y. Abrams, Esquire. Congratulations again to the 2020 awardees. We thank them for their influence and their pioneering spirit. Now, our next group of awardees. Terry Wiley is an assistant district attorney and the number three ranking prosecutor in the Alameda County District Attorney's Office located in Oakland, California. Mr. Wiley is an advocate for criminal justice reform and fighting inequities in the adult and juvenile justice systems. Mr. Wiley has supervised at all levels of the district attorney's office, including the felony trial team, the juvenile division, the Oakland branch courthouse, and appointed the director of recruitment and development. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute Terry Wiley, Esquire. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is enjoying today's luncheon. I want to express my sincere appreciation for this award in the name of Herman Sweat. I want to extend a heartfelt Thank you to President C.K. Hoffler, whose leadership of the National Bar Association has been tremendous. I also want to congratulate all of today's honorees. You know, early in my career as a prosecutor, I realized that I had to decide what kind of prosecutor I wanted to become because it had to be one that I could look myself in the mirror at the end of the day and be proud of my body of work. I decided I was going to be a voice for change, whether it was going into schools, churches, civic organizations, doing Know Your Rights presentations, or helping create Prosecuting While Black, which provides a safe space for young black prosecutors to come and discuss any feelings of isolation, anxiety, or any problems that they may be experiencing in their young careers and provide them with support. I, like many of you, have witnessed firsthand the inequities, indignities, and injustices that have resulted in disparate treatment of African Americans who have been ensnared in our criminal justice system. As a prosecutor, I've seen my role as a fight for justice on behalf of victims of crime, but also as a sword and a shield in the fight against injustice. As leaders in law enforcement, we are not only called on to prosecute criminals, we are also called to be a leading voice for systemic change of our criminal justice system in the fight against systemic racism. So I'm gonna end by saying thank you National Bar Association for this award, I really appreciate it, thank you. 
Akua Kapuk is an Assistant Attorney General for the Office of the Attorney General for the District of Columbia. Ms. Kapuk works in the Civil Litigation Division where she represents the District of Columbia, its employees and agencies in matters of personal injury, employment discrimination, and claims filed under the D.C. Whistleblower Protection Act and the D.C. Human Rights Act. Ms. Kapuk is the current Chief of Staff to the President of the National Bar Association, Tricia C.K. Hoffler, where she serves as a strategic advisor across a variety of organizational, political, and business decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute Akua Kapuk. Good afternoon. It is always a pleasure to be recognized for my passion, especially because I come from a family of servant leaders and activists. I have to give thanks to my parents in Sango Warfield Kapuk and Atiba Kapuk. During her college years at American University here in DC, my father was a founding member of an organization of African and African-American students called OSATO. They demanded relevant black studies courses, more African-American faculty, requested and received a budget for community programs. They worked to change the culture on a then lily white campus to one that embraced our interests with guests like James Brown, Eldridge Cleaver, and Muhammad Ali. My parents later worked with a group that started an Afrocentric based rites of passage program where young teens would learn critical life lessons from like-minded mothers and fathers. My parents wrote books on rites of passage and my father led a rights group for young boys for over 25 years. The activism and leadership I saw in my parents and grandparents is naturally instilled in me. I'd also like to thank my brother Kari and my sisters, Sophia and Elizabeth for their continued support. To my NBA family, I am honored to serve as your chief of staff this year. I'm grateful for President Hoffler's vision and the acknowledgement for the work that we are doing. From the Academy for Young Lawyers, starting with Arnold and Porter, to the community partnership with the Oprah Winfrey Network, to our presidential appointments project that provides greater access to our members to federal appointments. I am thrilled to be a part of it. And lastly, to President Hoffler, I don't know how to say thank you enough as we are still in the trenches with a completely virtual year and trying to keep our members connected. It has been a pleasure to serve and I just wanna say thank you and thank you to the National Bar Association for thinking of me. I cannot wait to see everyone again. So congratulations to all the awardees and when it's time, let's all get vaccinated. Thank you. The National Bar Association has had 14 women presidents in its history. Today, we acknowledge and honor the women leaders that are influencers, game changers, transformers, and mentors. We also want to take this time to recognize and acknowledge the current African-American women bar presidents of the NBA's affiliate chapters and other bar associations across the state. Watch with me as we celebrate this Women's History Moment, as women's history is to be celebrated every single day. She's just a girl and she's on fire Hotter than a fantasy Lonely like a highway She's living in a world and it's on fire Filled with catastrophe But she knows she can fly away
And now, our final two awardees before we hear from our keynote speaker. After graduating from college, Louis J. Boston Jr., otherwise known as Jamie, served our country on active duty for nearly 12 years in the Army Judge Advocate General's Corps. As a JAG, Jamie had the honor to work on several high-profile cases as a defense attorney, prosecutor, and legal advisor to senior commanders. Currently, Jamie is an associate counsel for the Office of General Law for the United States Patent and Trademark Office, where he practices information law. In 2018, he was recognized as one of the top lawyers of the year for his agency. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute Jamie Boston. Good afternoon. First, let me say thank you to God for this award. Then I'd like to thank my family, my parents, my sister, my brother-in-law, my wife, and my two little girls, the rest of my family, friends, and supporters. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Gertrude Rush Committee. Thank you for my selection. And of course, a special thanks to our phenomenal leader, C.K. Hoffler. I had a long speech prepared, well, not that long, but longer than what I'm allowed. So I just want to leave you with a couple of words. When I first received notice about this award, I pondered whether I really felt the bill of being a activist. And then I thought about it and I thought about my parents and I realized my father participated in sit-ins when he was a student at Morgan State. And my mother brought down barriers as an operatic singer in upstate New York. And then I thought about Heman Sweat himself. After all these years of attending these conferences, I never realized that he never received his law degree. Now that's significant. Think about that. This man gave up his life, his health, his marriage eventually, all so that we have the opportunity to become lawyers. His actions led to the breakdown of segregation and separate equal practices. So we owe him so much, and I'm so honored to get this award named after him. But more importantly, I want to use this opportunity as a call to action. And I'm going to keep it short, but I just want to put it out there to you. If you're a lawyer of color or a lawyer who cares about justice, whether you're black or not, we have a responsibility to support organizations like the NBA. Think about it. Think about the founding of the NBA itself. We must support the NBA. Why? Because when we weren't allowed into the ABA, the doors of the NBA were open. We have to remember to support those who were there for us first. Now, I'm not advocating one organization versus another, but just remember who opened their doors to us first. Furthermore, just ask yourself, if you wonder what's going on in the world today, if you're upset because you see on TV that people are being shot in the middle of the night, the people are dying after passing an alleged $20 fake bill. If you're concerned that in the next election cycle, you may be arrested because you give a brother a glass of water, then do something about it. You are just as much an enemy to democracy and a lack of security than anybody else if you don't do anything. So stand up, rise up, remember the NBA, Remember leaders like Heman Sweat. Remember what your parents taught you. We've been given many great gifts. We all have resources we can use, whether it's lending a, a Zoom session to the MBA, whether it's helping mentor law students or young lawyers. We all have gifts we can give. You don't have to be a protester to be part of a protest. You don't have to be the lead counsel to lead a movement. Use the gifts that God has given you. Please keep this in mind. Get involved. If you're already involved, then do more. Our country and our community needs you. Again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. May God bless you, and have a good afternoon. Attorney Daryl Jones is the board chair of the Transformative Justice Coalition. He became the board chair in January of 2019. Through TJC, he implemented the concept of the John Lewis Good Trouble Votercade and March Get Out the Vote series nationally, encouraging voters of color to participate in the 2020 electoral process. The John Lewis Good Trouble March Get Out the Vote series was held in many states across America and was widely acclaimed for 
its success in increasing voter participation from communities of color. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute Daryl Jones. Good evening, I'm Daryl Jones, the chairman of the board of the Transformative Justice Coalition. And I first want to thank the National Bar Association and President Hoffler for this Hemet Sweat Award. Mr. Sweat in 1950 was focused on leveling the legal educational playing field in America, not for the advantage of any group, but for the equality of all Americans. With his modest but dedicated spirit, Hemet Sweat successfully sued to desegregate the University of Texas Austin Law School. Today, I am humbled to accept the Hemet Sweat Award for the Transformative Justice Coalition's efforts, our efforts, to remove voting barriers for Black voters throughout the United States. Humbled to accept the award for Black volunteers in Georgia who persevered to overcall, overcome three-card Monty tricks to shuffle uh, around polling places and hours, only intended to cause confusion and frustrate the Black voters in Georgia. Humbled to accept this Human Sweat Award for all of the Black voters throughout America that were so inspired by our John Lewis Good Trouble voter awareness marches and, and voter cades that they followed the voter cades to polling places across the country and set record numbers for black, brown, and young voters. While I am excited by this award and our accomplishments this evening, I am mindful that as we speak tonight, that the enemy of inclusive democracy the enemy of fair voting, the enemy of, lead, of having a level playing field has risen its head and struck back with mean-spirited, vicious voter legislation in 47 states across this nation tonight as we speak. So while I'm pleased to accept this award, I'm compelled to call upon every Black attorney, every democracy-loving American, to join us on May the 8th 2021 for the National John Lewis Voter Advancement Day of Action. Join us as we demand Congress pass the John Lewis, John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. Demand S1, S1 HR1, the For the People Act be passed, signed into law to protect America's voters. Join us. Visit our website at votingrightsalliance.org and sign up to help us to protect America's vote. In the words of the late Congressman John Lewis, your vote is precious, almost sacred. It's the most powerful nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. Come to votingrightsalliance.org and help us on May the 8th to protect America's vote. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the National Bar Association. Now I have the special privilege of introducing our keynote speaker, L. Chris Stewart. Chris handles a variety of cases, including wrongful death, civil rights, premises liability, mass torts, and sexual assaults. Chris has won numerous record-setting jury verdicts and made U.S. history when he won the first billion-dollar jury verdict for a rape survivor. Chris is also recognized worldwide as one of the top civil rights lawyers of his generation. He has represented some of the most infamous civil rights cases of this century, including George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Rayshard Brooks. He also represented Walter Scott, who was shot in the back on video by a police officer. Chris also represented Alton Sterling, who was held down and killed on video by police in Baton Rouge. Other high profile cases include Gregory Towns of Georgia, which led to a record settlement and two prison sentences for the officers involved. Chase Sherman of Florida, who was killed on video, which led to a record settlement and DeAndre Phillips, who was also shot on video by police. Needless to say, Chris Stewart is genuinely doing the work. Good 
Good evening. I'm attorney L. Chris Stewart, Stewart Miller Simmons, trial attorneys in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm honored to bring you words at the Human Sweat Luncheon. I'm really just honored to be here. I wish that we all could be in person, uh, but gotta do this virtual thing as we've all gotten used to. Honoring our past, shaping our future. I love that motto and quote that was chosen this year. Honoring our past, shaping our future. It has so much meaning, it is so relevant even today because what happened in the past definitely shapes our future. What happened in the past, we are still fighting in the present. We honor our past by fighting in the present. We honor our past by continuing the battles that were started long before us by the legal greats of our day. Just look around now, look at the paper, look online. We are still fighting for voting rights. As if we were back in 1919 with R.D. Evans fighting so that we could vote. You look online, look on TV, we are still fighting for equal education like human sweat did, standing up against institutions who refuse to allow African Americans to attend. The battles we fought decades and decades ago are still being fought today. And that's why we need you on the front line leading the charge. That's why the NBA is always there safeguarding the rights of African Americans across this country. The leadership of the National Bar Association and the members of the National Bar Association must always be in the vanguard leading the charge. Because if not, all of the fights, all of the battles that have been waged for decades will be for naught, And rights will be taken because the battle never ends for justice. We honor our past by keeping organizations like the National Bar Association relevant and powerful and strong by making sure that our members attend events and participate and stay in the front line fighting against inequality. We honor our past by standing up against civil rights abuses, by fighting against police brutality. We honor our past because the same injustices that we faced decades and decades ago we still face today. Our future is shaped now. What we stand for today becomes our children's future that they must live in. Injustices born now reach maturity during their time period. Injustices born now reach maturity in their time period. That's why we must fight for victims like Ahmaud Arbery so that we have the right to run in any neighborhood we see fit. That's why we have to fight for victims like George Floyd so that we simply have the right to breathe. That's why we have to fight for victims like Breonna Taylor so that we simply have the right to sleep. We must continue the fight against injustices that started over a hundred years ago. And I'm guided by a motto that was given to me by my mentor and former boss, Willie Gary. Failure will never overtake me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. Lived by that motto since before.
four hours older. Simply a lot harder. Failure will never overtake me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. Poignant, purposeful, and perfect for today. Because failure cannot overtake you unless you allow it. You must be determined to succeed at all costs, at all sacrifices. Failure will never overtake you if you are determined to succeed. There is no case you cannot win. There is no corporate giant, police department, politician, whoever it may be that can stop you if you are determined to prevail. Failure will never overtake me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. And if you look at it, our ancestors were determined to succeed. Our founders of the National Bar Association were determined to succeed. And now it is us who must stay strong and determined to succeed. The National Bar Association fight for equality and justice has shaped the three guiding principles of my life. Our principles are family, faith, and justice. Family, because the atmosphere of the National Bar Association, even as a law clerk, was welcomed in. The first thing that you felt was I am with family. You go to a convention, you're immediately accepted and taught and nurtured and guided by some of the most powerful African-American lawyers and judges in the nation without hesitation or question. That's fair. When you're in trouble now or you need assistance on a case when you have a question with a simple phone call or email, any member of the National Bar Association is there. Fair. Faith. Because most of the time, the only thing that we have to rely on is our faith. When times are toughest, we can always rely on our guiding light of faith. Fighting some of these civil rights cases across the country, when you're battling, you're worried, you don't know if it's going to prevail, the only thing you can do is rely on faith. If you're fighting a big battle, you're going to trial, and you're getting ready, you can never lose sight of faith. And lastly, justice. All of us fight for justice daily, whether it be a corporate case or a civil rights case. Justice is our final destination. Making sure that our clients get a taste of what it is like to actually prevail and know that the legal system worked for them. Justice is the goal. Justice is the destination. Family, faith, and justice. Principles instilled in me through the National Bar Association, being raised and nurtured in that environment. It has brought me this far. And I will continue to fight the battles of the old all the way up until today. Honored to be invited to speak to all of you. I look forward to seeing you all in person as soon as possible. Take care. Wow. <laughs> Chris, that was an outstanding message for all of us. What a stellar group of awardees and a wonderful representation of the work and legacy of Heeman Sweat. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you all of the great programming to come today and tomorrow, including networking, CLEs, and the Gertrude Rush Awards that begin tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our celebrations will conclude with a prayer service. And now, please join me as we welcome our president, C.K. Hoffler, to close us out in her very own special way. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's, this was an incredible program. To our honorees, I say congratulations. Bravo for the extraordinary work that you've done in your communities. To Chris Stewart, who was our keynote speaker, I say, Chris, you've been my work child since you've been practicing. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom. And to our NBA family and our guests, thank you so much for tuning in to our NBA um, Heman Sweat program, where we honor just legends in our community. Let us pray. Almost gracious and wonderful Father, we come to you today saying thank you for the opportunity to be here together to honor your servants, to honor those who have committed to doing the good work you have called them to do, to honor those who continuously give of themselves in their profession and in their communities and in all that they do. I pray a special blessing upon each one here today who will be honored. And I pray a special blessing for everyone who is here to support, to encourage, and to walk hand in hand with each one of them in the work that they do. It is the name of your son that we offer this prayer. Amen. Right on. 
working hard down Mississippi, surrounded by four walls that ain't so pretty. His parents give him love and affection to keep him strong, moving in the right direction, living just enough, just enough for the city. For 14 hours And you can bet He barely makes a dollar His mother goes To scrub the floors For many And you best believe She hardly gets a pity Living just enough Just enough For the city Open the doors and bottom There's hope for us 
against the kingdom's throne So people get ready There's a train of cars 